Okay, uh, scene number three in the uh, gel pen um, article for Rubber Stamp Madness. I did this first scene right here where there's a lot of the uh, gel pen stars in here. But one of the things I was thinking about doing was this other type of scene um, that would involve um, maybe some firefly types of effects. But I started thinking that maybe it might be interesting to see the same composition, but the those dots to represent something else within that composition, I started thinking of snow because that's one of the great kind of uh, applications um, that you can do with gel pens. It's really fantastic for winter types of scenes. Okay, so anyway, I thought I would go and try a... When I'm doing a winter landscape type of um, thing, I like to go with... Uh, a lot of blue tones and when I'm using a lot of blue like that it's just so much easier for me just to use reinkers as opposed to using the pad <laughs> I, I mean I use pad for years and I, I still will if I don't have the color but I I've just recently bought a lot of um, reinkers, so it gives me a lot of coverage very fast okay now I'm kind of going in this little wispy motion right here and I'll continue on with a darker color now. That first one was Tumbled Glass. This one's Mer Mermaid Lagoon, so it's just going from like a light to a medium blue. Okay, so let's just take a look at this and see kind of what value it is. It's pretty dark if you have it kind of layered down there, but then when you kind of spread it around, it gets much um, lighter, you know, not having it so built up, so. Maybe we'll go for a little bit of both. Maybe we'll leave kind of a, a thicker streak of it for, for variation, and some areas will kind of make it a little bit smoother. Okay, now I do, I do like kind of that movement in there. Um, when I apply some darker colors, though, I, I think we'll, we might be losing some of that um, kind of brush stroke in there, but we'll just see where it goes. Okay, now this is a Prussian blue. I don't have... Well, actually, I, th I do think I have that um, blueprint sketch. Let me try that one. This one's pretty dark. Let me just get a little bit. You need more of your lighter colors and less of the, the darker ones, okay? Because the lighter ones, you know, you use it for a lot more coverage, okay? Now, I always like that blueprint sketch when I've tried it so far, so let's give it a try here and see what it looks like. It's really super deep very kind of navy-ish, but blueprints, I don't know, I I think they, there's a tinge of uh, kind of red in it, you know, for a slight violet. I'm not sure if that's what it is, it's just, it's kind of that indigo look. Okay, I'll go about like that. It kind of gives um, the scene a little bit of movement, like that. And there's, I don't know, a bit of a... Just bring, bringing in an element of kind of the human brush stroke is kind of nice um, into a piece. It, it infuses a little bit of, a, you know, the, the personality of the uh, artist, or the hand of the artist, whoever's doing it, to have a little bit of that kind of streakiness in there. Um, I do like really super blended and um, smooth applications as well, but I do like um, I do like some kind of gesture uh, to the applications as well. So um, you can have both in the same one if you want, or one could be one way and another one could be another. All right, that was the Prussian blue, if I didn't mention it. Let's go and hit um, black right now. Or, let's see, I was wondering if I want to go with another color. I was just kind of contemplating if that was bright enough for me. Maybe I'll try some of the Marvy blue here. Um, this one's light blue, and it gives me a really deep, rich, um, saturated color. It's very, very bright. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good. And I do like that, you know, the, that the uh, the previous color is already kind of setting up, so I, I, I'm still retaining 
some of those really nice um, kind of brush strokes in there. It's smoothing it out a little bit just because it's making it darker and the strokes aren't quite as apparent because we're darkening the area around them, but I still do see them there. And I think it looks pretty good. I'm kind of leaving those little strokes in there um, for that value variation, a range from something really light, and I'm working it into something fairly dark. I do want these, just for the sake of the article, I, I do want these um, gel pen dots to really stand out so the darker you take your sky area back here um, the, the more of those um, light uh, applications will stand out So let's really make it kind of dark on the top portion and transition into the lighter down below. The dots will stand out more up top, you know, in terms of the snowfall or uh, whatever it represents. Could be stars, too. Ooh, that's looking good now. It's just starting to hit right in there. It's got that really deep saturation. I'm kind of surprised it's going on as well as it is. And I, I speculate that's because it's kind of, it's really hot. I thought it was hot and humid, so it wouldn't dry as fast, but I think just the temperature is really kind of warm in the house here, so. Um, it's allowing me to apply it. Sometimes it stays wet for quite a long time and it's hard to apply, you know, your third or fourth layer of color. Um, or black in this case. All right, looks good. Let me try something. Let me go back to that Prussian blue and let me see if that um, applies. Yeah, the card's setting up so it's allowing me to apply more of this Prussian blue now. Before it was really wet, so I wasn't really seeing um, the Prussian blue on there. All right, now let me go back to this. Uh, the blueprint sketch. Let me get another drop in there. Just to really get that saturated in there. I think it looks very rich. All right. Pretty good tones there. All right, let's get into the, uh, the composition here. I'm going to be referencing this piece. If it doesn't stamp out exactly, eh, so be it. I should be able to get it reasonably close, though. Okay. Another kind of just the tip of it over here.
All right, I'm stamping this out in the uh, Versafine Black Pigment Ink. It makes for a nice dramatic, very dark, and pretty fine print. I really like how that pigment ink um, works over the top of the glossy cardstock and over the top of all that built up tone. I think it really has a, a really great feel to it and to me it almost looks three-dimensional when applied. All right now I'm going to be doing some snowfall here and there's not a whole lot that um, differentiates snow from stars but what you would do is you just kind of apply some of this over the top over the front of that. Now those trees down there are going to be um, kind of wet so I might not be able to do it right now but I can kind of get this started though. One of the things about snowfall is I tend to keep the um, dots a little bit more consistent. Uh, with stars I, I tend to vary it a little bit more, you know, cluster them and, and whatnot. See that's it's a little bit different, uh, you know, than you know, doing stars. I like I said, I kind of cluster things together a little bit more, less keep it less regular. But you can do it however way you want. Okay, now we have to come into our objects and make the snowfall between branches and whatever tree limbs, you know, whatever different foliage or, or anything within the scene. And then we'll start putting it over the top of it if I can, if that black isn't just too wet where I can't rollerball, you know, some of this pig. Uh, gel into it. We'll see how it goes though. Alright. Okay, it's allowing me to do it, it looks like. See, I have some snow in front of the trees. Okay, now, after we get that down, I'll build it up a little bit. out of the way. Stands to reason that you'd have snow falling, you'd it'd be landing on some branches. So kind of put build some up on some of these branches. I went I don't know if I'd do it on every single one. It might be a little bit overkill to do that, but I kinda like to do it in the meeting, in the intersection of the branch and the trunk, I think that's a really good spot to uh, kind of start it off with. You know, it tends to collect, I think, right in that intersection a little bit more than the, the actual branches.
It's kind of fun, huh? It makes the uh, tree look a little bit more three-dimensional by adding those snowy kind of highlights to it. I kind of taper the, the line form a little bit. I kind of put a little bit thicker in the that uh, meeting of, you know, branch and trunk, and then I kind of just t kind of taper it off a little bit. Or try to, at least. One thing you, you could do, too, is just um, for a different look, but it would be really effective is just to stamp those out in, you know, white. It'd be a little bit different look. You wouldn't have these highlights on it like this, you know, with the dimension, but um, I think it would be a really cool look. All right, now I've addressed the, the leafless pines. Now let's address some of the, uh, uh, the spruce uh, right around here. You can just kind of, it's not as defined, so you just kind of have to kind of scumble some things. I mean, you can see some of the branches in here, but I wouldn't say it necessarily, you know, snow would be built up like that, but you can just kind of start off and start adding it to the top sides of some of the different forms and then just kind of extend it out a little bit. Maybe on the uh, spruce there might be more um, snow already built up, you know, on the needles, the pine needles, the leaves. All right, now for the sake of the article, I am going to go a little bit more extreme with some of these snowballs, and uh, we'll call it, or snowflakes, I guess, and we'll call it, uh, you know, there, you know, there's some of them that are much closer to us, um, and some are farther back, but this will give us a little bit of variation uh, within the sky, so it's not just kind of a monotonous pattern of equally, you know, spaced snowflakes. And I just think for the magazine article, we'll be able to see them a little bit more uh, distinctively. Because who knows, you know, when they print this, it, you know, the piece could be, I don't know, two inches high or something like that, depending on, you know, how big uh, they do the... Uh, prints within the, uh, within the copy. Alright, actually that looks pretty good, going bigger. Kind of looks a little bit more bold this way. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Actually, I think I'm going to add a few more stars here. We'll go a little bit bigger in some of these. I need to spray these so they, uh, they're nice and saturated and 
deep. As far as the colors go. I'm going to rush this one right here. I, I'm adding these stars and I think they look pretty good. I, maybe I was too conservative as far as my uh, usage of the gel pens on this one. Look at these two scenes right here. Really similar in composition. I mean, the structuring is the same, but uh, the backgrounds are quite a bit different. And uh, we've achieved, I think, a pretty decent uh, amount of variation. Let me try this uh, light blue uh, gel pen here from Shuttle Art. It's kind of baby blue. I haven't used a lot of these pens. There's 180 colors, so some I haven't used yet. So, kind of get a, have to get it flowing. But anyways, let's let's add in some blue. Um, gel pen effects in here. Maybe these represent stars in the background, or just snowflakes again that are farther back, you know, from the from our eye, so that they're not quite as light and distinctive as the larger white dots in there. Because if you do blue, there's not as much contrast. So it tends to uh, look farther back. So you get this kind of inherent dimension um, with this usage of something like this. So anyway, so they're a little bit more subtle, right? So you get the benefit of the kind of the uh, immediacy of the, the larger dots in here, the white, and then there's the secondary layer back there that maybe people only see if they kind of kind of hold it up and look at it a little bit closer. All right, so anyways, that is that scene, more of a wintry, snowy, you know, scene, or, yeah, snowfall, first snow of the year, or something like that. And then we have the kind of the more of the celestial one right here, so... I think, you know, I, I can tweak these a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit darker on the perimeter of this um, before I spray it. Just because it is for an article, then I'll mat it up and uh, get it looking pretty good before I'll uh, kind of submit it permanently for the, uh, you know, as the final uh, incarnation of this piece. But it's for a magazine, so we want them looking good. So I think a, a nice uh, mounting of that maybe or I, I i don't know i might put a frame around it digitally or something like that so anyways hope you enjoyed the piece it's a pretty simple one but i think very dramatic and deep and uh varied in terms of my textures and whatnot but i think it makes a pretty it's a simple but effective i think winter card christmas card or whatever and this would go great with some sort of saying i think you know about snowfall or just the winter um, season in general if you have any questions, drop us a note. If you like this video, maybe uh, like, share, and subscribe. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.